Hey, what's up, Wargamers? How y'all doing today? I'm Isaiah. Welcome to World of Wargaming. Today's going to be a little bit of a different, kind of a change of pace for me. Um, instead of playing a game today, I'm going to talk about some games. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about this book, Blaster 4, and uh, why I think it's awesome. Why do I think Blaster 4 is awesome? Well, reason number one, I love the authors that are involved in this book. Um, in this book and in all of the Blaster books, this is volume four, I also have volume three. I do not have one and two yet, but they are absolutely on my to buy list. So in this, in authors in this book, you've got Ash Barker from Guerrilla Miniature Games, awesome content creator. He's got a game called Last Days, I want to say. Last Days? Yes, Last Days. Last Days. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I have not played Last Days yet, but my friend Mike, who's been on the channel before, has played a lot of it. Um, the problem for me there is, and it's a, a one that I'm working to fill, is that that's a gap in my model collection. I have a very deep and wide collection of fantasy models. I have a fair selection of sci-fi models. Um, I don't have a lot of modern models. Um, but that's a gap that I'm working to fill. I've got my 3D printer running and I'm always, you know, cruising around eBay and Etsy and, and other websites looking for, well, for cool models. You've also got Joseph McCullough. Now, if you're, if you're new to my channel, you might not know, but I'm a huge fan of Mac Joseph McCullough's work. Um, he is responsible for Rangers of Shadow Deep, which I play an enormous amount of. Um, if you'd like to see that, um, click up in one of those corners to go check that out. Uh, he's also responsible for Frostgrave, um, Stargrave, and, and this game, The Silver Bayonet, which I bought this book as soon as it came out, and I've read it a whole bunch of times, and I still haven't played it because, again, gap in my model collection. I don't really have any Napoleonics, but I have the models now, and they're like halfway painted. Um, but I bought this game on sight just because of the coolness factor of it, of the, the setting, the Napoleonic Gothic horror. So you got uh, Justin McCullough in there. We've got Mike Hutchinson. God bless him. He's the creator of Gaslands and also Perilous Tales, both of which I play a lot of. Check out one of the corners if you want to go see some of that content. Uh, you got Sean Sutter. Now, Sutter's games I haven't played. Um, I've read the rules for Sludge, which are in Blaster Volume 3, several times. I think that I understand how the game works. I've watched other creators play it a fair amount. Um, so I think I understand how the game works. I'm just working on figuring out how I want to do the army. So he's in here, and then Joey McGuire is in here, Joseph McGuire. Um, he is also an amazing author. He wrote um, This Is Not a Test which is a post-apocalyptic narrative campaign survival game. Um, and it's I'm starting to see a lot more content for that game out there, which is awesome because I'm interested in it. But more interesting to me is he wrote this game, Crea uh, Creality's Edge. Reality's Edge, which is a cyberpunk skirmish game. And um, the, again, this one, I have the models for it, have a great map for it, getting a little hung up on terrain, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there because I really wanna play this game. Um, it's It's, not what we're here to talk about, but it's awesome, and it's by Justin Blair. So, so let's crack into the book. Um, I'm not going to be going like flipping through every single page. I'm just going to kind of highlight uh, what's going on with it, and what's in here, and how awesome it is, in my opinion. And I think you should agree with me. I want you to, but you don't have to. Either way, either way, it's still awesome. <laughs> So first up in the book is Ash's contribution, which in this issue is some hero, it looks like, some unique characters that you can play, some named characters, which is very cool. The models that are represented here, especially the one for the luchador, is or are super sweet. Legends, legends, they're called, they're called legends. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Um, next up is this game, which I'm 
super excited for. This is brutal. Tank Arena. This is McGuire's contribution to the book. It's a 1v1 dystopian futuristic um, tank battle. Like tank battling, dueling is the a popular like spectator sport. And so you build a tank. Um, obviously, you can customize lots of stuff. And they have a link to their website where they're selling STLs and stuff. And it's the files look good. I did look at them. Um, but you can use any old tank you have. They recommend recommend a six by four for each player. You know, within that kind of footprint. But it's got all your rules. And this is a full game. This is a full standalone game. Um, the previous one for Last Days, the Legends. Those are more of an add-on to the existing game. This, however, is a game in and of itself. So of your, I think this was about 40 bucks shipped, um, you've got one full game and you've got an, ex an expansion pack. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward rule system. Um, it uses D10s. No, D6s. This one is D... Wait. Yes. I was right. <laughs> D6. Sorry, I've been reading a lot of rule books this week, so I got a little bit of rule soup in my head. Sorry. Uh, but it comes with some, it comes with your rules. It comes with scenarios. Look at that art. Look at those pink tanks. How awesome is that? Those are sweet. And the best part is that, like, you can really, really, you know, like, go crazy and lavish some time on this game because you only ever need one tank. That's it, just one. So you can really like dig in. I've got like, as soon as I read this, I was like, oh man, I got like some old busted up rhinos and land raiders and I got a Sherman kit and a Panther kit, which are World War, you know, World War II historical tanks. And I was like, oh man, there's, there's so much room for activities. Like there's so much you could do here. And that is, awesome to me because I do like to spend a fair amount of time painting a model. You know, in modeling, building models isn't my favorite unless it's doing something like this where it's just a very, very, very wide open range of creativity of what you can do. And as long as you follow a couple of very, very simple guidelines, there's no wrong way to do it. There's, there's, there's no wrong way to do it. You can't. You can't mess it up. You can't. You can make it shiny, you can make it dirty, you can make it rusty, you can make it anything you want it to be, but you only have to do it once. And then you've got scenarios. It's actually got an appendix in it, which always makes me happy to see in, a, in any set of rules. Like, just tell me where to go to find what I need. Um, it also comes with a page of like tank cards and your different decks that you need and then a cut out of the template. So I just Xerox these, I photocopied. I went to the website um, thinking that, you know, it would have like a PDF version of the tokens that I could download and print out, but it did not. And that's okay. Um, you know, I found a workaround. That's what we do. We're resourceful people. Um, or if not that, then I think it would have been sweet. And this is, I mean, I understand, you know, Drive through RPG and Wargame Ball, it's an awesome way to buy rules, especially obscure rules that you can't, you're not normally going to come across in your LGS. Uh, so I love those places and I love their printing. The printing is always very well done. I've never gotten a book that was like shoddily bound or anything like that. And I've bought. Let's not talk about that right now. Yes, yes, that's right. Not only do I have to deal with the, 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 the model shame, of buying more models than I can ever paint or build, but I also bear the weight of buying more rules than I'll probably ever get to play. Sometimes I think about it, and it makes me super sad, like almost into an existential funk when I when I get to thinking about the games and not so much the models, but the games because these are worlds that I want to experience on a tabletop. So you just gotta. It's just got to buckle up and get it done. And where I was going with all of that before I got completely and utterly derailed on my thought train was that I think it would be awesome if these pages with the tokens were printed one side and were printed on a piece of cardstock. 
with like a center, you know, a perforation on it. That way you can just pop them out and cut them, but not, you know, double-sided because then you cut up the other side. But it's all single-sided, not necessarily perforated on the individual things. I can cut it out. I know how to work a pair of scissors. I'm a grown up. Um, but just on a, on a piece of card stock. I think that would be awesome. I don't know how it would affect the printing or the cost or anything else, but if it was a matter of it cost like an extra dollar or two on my end to have that and not have to go find another way to get these things without cutting them out of the book, especially since they're printed on both sides of the paper, um, that would be awesome. Absolutely awesome, but either way, it's not a complaint by any means, it's just a thought that I have about the topic. Next up is some stuff for Sludge from Sean Sutter. Um, I just recommended this game to somebody earlier today actually on the Silver Bayonet thread or Facebook group maybe. They were saying how they would, hey, they loved the theme of Silver Bayonet but they were looking for something with a larger scale that had that same kind of gothic, you know, doom energy. And uh, so I was like, well, there's two games I can recommend there, and that's Turnip 28 and Sludge. Like, those are the best two examples of, I don't, I, don't, I think Sean may have said this in here, is maybe with me, I think, I know it's, I don't know if it's, he invented it, but it's a good word, but it's Doom Fantasy. Doom Fantasy. Just, 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 just let that word bounce around your brain for a second and let your imagination start doing stuff. Doom fantasy so sludge is a mid-sized small ish army game i would say like it's bigger than a skirmish but it's not like a huge amount of models like you know bolt action or napoleonic games or warhammer or age of sigmar or any of those other big army games um and it's just a dark dirty violent world and it's awesome so sludge the, the core rules for sludge are in blaster volume three which you can still buy from drive through rpg and um i also think that this book is awesome i'm not going to say you should buy it because i don't like telling people what to do with their money but this one's awesome too and the core rules for that book are in here so in the core rules it gives you a very very balanced list of units that are kind of universal to everybody and you can take them and then model them or design them however you want you know like if it's a, a wet if it's a unit that shoots you can make that unit look pretty much however you want as long as it looks like a unit that can shoot um which is awesome it's awesome i love it when everything in the game is the same not only is it balanced and makes for a very fun you know game but also, it's less things that I have to keep up with. Because I got a lot bouncing around in this noggin of mine sometimes, you know? And geez Louise, I just sometimes it's hard to keep up with. When everything, when everything when does everything is the same, you know, when a rifle is a rifle is a rifle, or a sword is a sword is a sword, God, it's beautiful. But anyways, the core rules are in Blaster 3. This is a little supplement piece that gives you outlines for specific nations and groups of people within the world and he's not saying he's very upfront while saying about saying like look if you like the vibe of this it doesn't have to be what i called it you know you call it what you want model it how you want this is just some suggestions now also i don't know if this was around during the last when sludge first came out in blaster 3 but it says here that there are some armies for this game from BlacksightStudios.com, um, which I haven't looked at yet, but I'm very, very interested in because that's been a barrier for me for this game. Is like I don't, I just, where do I get these models from? Like where do I find them? I have a 3D printer, and I don't just, I don't even know what, I don't even, I don't even. <sighs> Breathe, Isaiah. I got it together. I don't even know where to find those models, but. If there's an option where, like, especially if this is, like, an army. Like, can I buy this just as an army? Like, a whole box, and then just I'm ready to take this out and put it together and paint it and play sludge. And if that's the case, 
might go spend some money. So this is kind of a, like it's nation supplements. Um, and they all look pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about each of them in a second, but there's a sentence here that I want to read because it might be the best sentence that I've read all week. This supplement steers the sludge ship away from the realms of anachronism and directly into weird doom fantasy. Best sentence I've read all week. So it starts with the Imperial Factions. Um, he references the Basilisk Empire, but again, you can make it whatever you want. Um, it looks like each faction or whatever gets some special characters here. You get an Imperial Artificer and imp some Imperial Zouaves, Conscripts, Crawler, Tilger Tank, they got tanks. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. How... God, that's freaking cool. Jesus. And then after the Imperialists, you have the Royalists, um, which look very, very much... I don't know. They got, they got the Tall Hats, so maybe Britishy. They got a Magician and some Royal Marines. Oh, yeah. They're battle Kite. Flying ships, they got airplanes. Then we got free people's factions. Ah, it's a cool world. It's a cool world, cool models, cool game. And it's not the only thing in the book. Blaster is awesome. And I think the last one might be the Manticore cults. Priest of the Manticore, Throngs, Zealots, Crusaders, Nations of Pen... <sighs> Look at that quality of life right there. That's a chart. I love a good chart when it's about what my toy soldiers do. Otherwise, they tend to make my head hurt. Here we come to Mike Hutchinson's contribution. Now, I unfortunately cannot show you a lot about this because I am still playing it. I can tell you that the very first scenario is gonna be, still not there, is gonna be capture the flag. Other than that, I can't, I can't go past there because it specifically says stop reading. And I just have to stop reading. But, um, this is a legacy, the extension of the Legacy came, Campaign for Gaslands that was started in Blaster Volume 3, which my buddy Rob and I have played through a lot on the channel. Again, check one of the corners. Uh, and it's just, it's Gaslands is a super fun game. Any game that has a very excellent cost to fun ratio is insane. You know, like you got cost going up one side, and then you've got fun going up the other side. Like it's okay for a game to cost this much as long as it's this fun. But if it costs this much and it's this fun, that doesn't work out. And then last, so that's all I can really tell you about that is Gaslands is awesome. Mike Hutchison is an awesome game writer. Um, Blaster 4 is awesome. Next up, Death Shit 1 from Joseph McCullough. Uh, solo co-op, it's got a very Doom-esque vibe to it. Um, you are a team of warriors from various periods in time. You choose whether to be a low-tech squad, a middle-tech squad, or a high-tech squad. And it's basically, you know, Stone Age to Gunpowder Age, and then Gunpowder Age into slightly future, maybe cyberpunkish, and then far future as the high tech. And each 
the lower the tech, the higher the numbers in the squad. And you just kind of get dropped into these rooms in an alien ship, and your goal is to get through all five rooms without dying. Now, the rooms are pre-made, but they are randomly generated. So it's semi roguelike is what I would call it. But either way, the system looks good. It's... It, it's a little... It's got an interesting thing to it with the damage that deals with the evens or odds of the dice, which is a new mechanic um, that I've seen. Uh, so I'm kind of interested to see about that, but it's not meant to be drawn out combats. It's meant to be very, very quick. Like it's dead or it's knocked down. Like there's no like you deal a damage and then it keeps going. Like it's, unless you miss. And then of course you can get hit. And if you miss, it's a contested roll against the alien. And if you get higher than them, yeah. So, or to, maybe it's, I'll have to look at it. Maybe a target number. I'll, I'll dig into that part deeper, you know, when I'm ready to play it. Um, right now I'm just talking about it. And then it comes also with some nice cards and tokens and description. Oh wait, that's not, that's not it. It comes with your scenarios, your rooms, and then some tokens and cards and stuff. And again, I wish, you know, put all of this on cardstock printed on one side, put it in the very middle of the book, perforate it so I could, or I can't really make that sound, but tear it out and then have it and then I'll cut it out and then I got tokens and I don't, I don't have to find, you know, whatever. But either way, uh, I, other than the Gaslands campaign, this is probably the game in the book that I'm currently most excited for. Um, because I have all the models for this, all I need to do is, is get the rooms figured out. Um, the two and a half by two and a half would be easy. Um, you know, and I may just change the concept a little bit. And instead of having rooms, you know, I have like a random, you know, I'll do random board. Oh, that's a good, maybe I'll do random, like different boards, like forest, city, whatever, where like as they're going into a different room, the aliens are like, creating a hologram like a, it's like you're in a holodeck so you're not actually going from one room to another you're just oh <sighs> that's gonna have to wait but anyways this is awesome and then you've got some references websites everything in the back it's like if you're interested like from where different models came from or mats or terrain or stuff it gives you a way to find all of those creators and vendors and everything else um, and that's all of that, all the things that I've just said are why I think Blaster 4 is an awesome book. At 40 bucks delivered in the U.S. Um, now, you can also buy a Strictly PDF, and that's, I think, 20 bucks. Um, you, if you buy just the rule book, just the hard copy, it's like 33, and then it's like four or five bucks for shipping. And then, or maybe it's 35, I don't remember. And then if you get the book plus the PDF um, I think it's like maybe 40 40 something um, I, I'm not against PDF rule books they have their moments but I'm not well, I'm like if, if it comes with a PDF awesome I'll look at the PDF until the book gets here but just part of me wants to use the book like I want to go through it and I want to highlight it and I want to put little tabbies on the pages so that I can find everything that I'm looking for um, it's it's part of how I learn games is to, to read it and then highlight the important parts of each thing that way I can quickly jump to the part I need otherwise my little bit of ADD will have me just absolutely lost swimming in words trying to find what I'm looking for uh, but that's just how I have to, have to do it so for me having a hard copy helps some people absolutely love just PDF boom phone tablet whatever and then it's right there um, even even if I buy things that are only PDFs, I will usually print them out or take or have it go to a, send it to a print shop to have them print it out and bind it up real nice for me, uh, which adds on to the price a little bit. But it's worth it to me to have the hard copy that I can have physically in my presence while I game or while I'm just sitting around and reading. And that, friends, is why I think Blaster Four is awesome. I don't know if you agree with me after all of that, but if you sat around and listened to me talk for this long, you're a freaking hero. I think it. Cannoli, the World of Wargame and Warhound thinks it. You're a champ. I hope that if you're new to indie gaming, you give any or all of the games that I mentioned today a try. If you have questions about 
any of the games that I mentioned or anything else, you know, leave it in the comments and I will get to you. I promise it might take me a day because I'm sometimes a little bit slow, but I will get back to you and let you know what I think or let you help you find things that you might be looking for. Um, I hope y'all have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor, friend. And as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel go over there check out the link in the description check out the patreon there's a lot of cool stuff over there including access to our discord server talk to me hang out with me talk about our work what we got going on in the hobby um some shout outs all kinds of cool stuff check it out if that's something that you think you would be into and regardless of whether or not you do that i want you to know that i am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and as always may the dice be ever in your favor <laughs>